So, sorry. What? Hello. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I didn't. I don't know my email password because I have uh, automatically on the computer, and it's a different password, and I forget. I forgot it because I have uh, a lot of them. Sorry. Uh, so, about warehouse. We are an um, architectural collective. We were formed in 2013 and we are based in Lisbon. And uh, my presentation is Warehouse Collective Practice in a Time of Crisis. The, um, the crisis here is uh, really important because we, we, we formed the warehouse when uh, we, would, we were students still and we entered in the market with the peak of the financial crisis in Portugal. So all of our friends or emigrate to another country or they don't practice architecture. And the, the typical architectural firms are, were closing because they went out of job. The construction completely stopped in Portugal. So we wanted to stay in Portugal and to, and we, we wanted to, to fight for it, to find a way with our skills as architects to, to stay and to work in our country. So, uh, we started like many young architects start with competitions, idea contests, and then we find out that they didn't fulfill us. We want something more practical with, uh, with more results. So we, we started with the hands-on approach, you know? To, we, we want to participate in, through all the, the process, to the design, the mediation, and uh, in the construction. So we are really, uh, I think we are really happy when we are in the construction site. Other thing that we realize that it, with our skills as architects, we can uh, mediate between the communities, the local, the local governments, um, between associations, between groups of artists, uh, uh, architects also, because we had that skills to work with the clients, work with the specialities like engineering in the typical uh, uh, architectural project. So we, we passed these mediation skills to the, the city scale. Other thing that we, we, we want is like uh, the role of architect as a in create, uh, creator of inputs in the city, be like a social agitator. Many of our projects start with an idea and uh, we by ourselves create the opportunities in the city to create jobs and work for, for ourselves. Uh, just to finish the, this introduction, uh, for us it's very important the collaborative work. We are a collective, we are not an architectural firm, because we all have a, another job, we, we have a main core of the collective, but sometimes we adapt the, pro the, the team to each project. So some projects we have two people working, and other projects we have 20. It's different because it gets more um, more rich uh, process um, and uh, at the same time we're not uh, so much obligated to um, to um, to engage in the typical uh, architectural firm with uh, all the expenses that we have with that so we have a different organization that we pass to our work too we work collective with uh, other artists, other architectural, all the projects that I'll show you here today are with the collaboration with or the communities or another architects or another artists. So the first project that I'll uh, talk about is um, Sopa de Pedra. It's in, it was a, um, a competition that we applied and we won. And the, um, the goal of this competition is to reactivate the public space through an urban intervention. Uh, the competition was uh, to create an event for one week. It was for one month, so 
we were supposed to have four projects develop, developing each week. They choose eight. So we have to adapt and, to, and we started this project with another, with another collective and they mix the, the, the projects. What it happened is our goal was to create an open building site to infrastructure this, the, this uh, small uh, square near uh, the, old the old train station in Port. Uh, the goal of Collective Contraband, our partners in this project, was for cooking for uh, 48 hours straight and giving the food to everybody that wants to, to, to eat and, and the passers-by. So we mixed the, the two projects and what we did is to create the infrastructure for an event of a, on a weekend to where the, they will cook for 24 hours instead of 48 and we create the, the benches, the stools, the tables, the, some part of the kitchen so they can cook and the, they basically cook with fire and create a soup and uh, offer tea, coffee and water to everyone that wants. Um, in our part, we, we started this open um, construction, uh, like open building site. Uh, the people were very suspicious in the beginning, but they starting to collaborate, especially with the stools. We create um, a way so that it was really easy for the, the, the people to create the stools. And the stools were a big success and uh, most of them were stolen. And we, we get really glad because of that, because it was a success. Another thing in, our, in, the, in this project, because the concept of people eating together is really strong uh, when you, you can put a conversation and a debate on it. So we, we create the, the meal and uh, at the same time a debate about uh, the consequence of uh, the temporary interventions in the city. And uh, because it's a problem that concerns us a lot because they, they were invested money in a temporary um, project and what the consequences of that uh, project and uh, what's the future of the structures. In this uh, project, the nearby community is from Bangladesh. They, are, um, uh, they have a lot of shops around. So we start talking with them and uh, to understand their needs and we offer them the structures for their meetings so the tables the the stools the benches they they get it the they get it for themselves because they wanted to use the the public space to have their meetings and to have their meals on the weekends so we guarantee the future of the structures this is for, uh, the project was from May. We still want to know if it will have a result or, or not. The next uh, project is a, it was an exhibition called Marches do Castel in Lisbon with a warehouse and a Fund de Arquitetura Social. Um, the Fund de Arquitetura Social had a project in the old neighborhood, historic neighborhood of Lisbon near the castle. And the, the neighborhood is, uh, there are problems of gentrification um, and uh, many, many of the, the old people and the young people are leaving because the, the, the prices of the housing skyrocket because of the tourism. So, Marches do Castel is, um, is about the traditional parade in the St. Antonio festivities in Lisbon, one of the biggest parties. It's, it's like a um, Rio de Janeiro carnival parade, but uh, yeah, a bit more conservative. So, this was a really engaged with the community because in that year, particular year, they didn't participate in a parade, they didn't have the means. So this exhibition was much, much, much more important to them because it's the piece of history for them. This parade have almost 100 years old. 
So the community participated by donating the <coughs> costumes, the props, the newspaper, and engaged in the construction and the building of the structures itself, and even do, did the handmade products to, to sell in the exhibition. Now, uh, this, this project is a... Um, I wanted to show this project also to, to understand that it's not, it's not architecture, this, this, uh, but uh, we really wanted to engage in a, in a bigger spectrum of uh, our skills can, uh, can accomplish. So the exhibition is one of the, the <coughs> curatorial job, it's one of the, the ways that we, we can go to So, uh, and now I'll give you the, the last project that I want to show you is the uh, Cozinha Comunitaria das Terras da Costa. In uh, Almada, is the other side of the river uh, near Lisbon. Uh, it's a project from Warehouse and Atelier Mob. This is one of the, our biggest uh, uh, projects and is based on a, is, is the scale of building is more related to the architecture. Uh, so the this is a neighborhood with precarious houses where 500 people live, and uh, almost 100 are children. There's a Gypsy community and a Cape Verdean community. This is in the doorsteps of Lisbon, one of the European uh, capital uh, capital of Europe. And uh, no one, even in Portugal, knows, uh, didn't know about the existence of this neighborhood. It's located in the agricultural fields. And on the, um, on the top, you see the, the, the sea is the, in, uh, with the beach. And in this, uh, this is a protected area. So the, the local municipality don't have the power to legalize the, these houses or even in, in the meanwhile, don't have the means or the funds to give houses to these people. So there's no solution for the, for the immediate uh, time. So uh, at the mob entered in the, in the neighborhood by a workshop, but no, with no so much consequences, but they, they engage with the community. And the community, this is a bottom-up project. They said, the Atelier Mob said, okay, we as architects, what can we do for, for you, the community, to, to get your better conditions or improve your life conditions? So they asked for a kitchen because they already have the dynamic of eating together, but they don't, didn't have the place to eat. And, uh, but the main goal is with every kitchen needs water. water. And there's a really problem in this uh, neighborhood because they don't have water. They don't have tap water. So they have to go to the city to bring water with a wheelbarrow. In the, in the winter, especially in the winter, it was really difficult. So the hidden goal of the, the kitchen is to bring water to the neighborhood. Not to tap water for each house, but a water point in the middle of the neighborhood will make all the difference. Um, Warehouse enter in the in the project because we were uh, participating in a project called Casa do Vapor nearby. It was a temporary project uh, in wood, and uh, part of the wood was donated to this project to begin the, the, the process. And we went with the wood. Um, and the first thing that that we did is uh, to meet with the community, and talk about the kitchen. So if they wanted an open kitchen, a closed kitchen, uh, what are the expectations? And you, in the time that we spent without building uh, on the neighborhood, we, we start to, to understand that it's not a, so much the kitchen that they want because they build with fire on the streets, maybe to prepare the food, but more a community center, a gathering point, a public space for them. So the kitchen grew up for a community center. In the beginning, we, we didn't have uh, funds. We only have uh, 
the energy to do something and uh, some pieces of wood. So we started to do uh, parallel workshops to engage everybody in the kitchen project. Like uh, Ollie said in the uh, last pre uh, the presentation yesterday, uh, old people, the elders, cannot participate in the construction and they have to have that sense of ownership and to, and to be part of it. So we had the uh, sewing workshops, that was the kids painting postcards for fundraising. We get fundraising uh, uh, dinners, uh, serigraphy workshops to create merchandise for the, for the kitchen. And this was a parallel um, events to the construction. And then we get to the construction. Uh, the municipality could not give the license, but at the same time we needed their support. We waited, we waited for so long, like for six months, that we decided to do something and uh, we started to build for ourselves. And uh, it was a gamble, but we had to do something. So we're starting to build because we have the wood and that portrait is really important because it was the first uh, structure that was raised there. And that was the moment that we finally get the trust of uh, the community because they are uh, very suspicious because for a long time they had uh, hear promises of uh, something going to happen to them and for almost 30 years nothing happened. So they started to believe and started to engage more in the project this time. So this was the, um, the, first, uh, the first structure. It was an open structure. You cannot, you don't, uh, didn't have the wood to, to do more than this. And there's a, a simple roof. This model structure was uh, an option so we can grow the kitchen uh, as far as we want. Because uh, with the, the needs of the, the community, we can grow uh, and close the, the, the structure. And one, one thing that is really important, then we get the financial support of a big Portuguese institute called Gulbenkian. And this is a strategy that we, that we now we think that is really important because if you reach the, the institutions with an idea, only the idea is not that powerful, you know, because when we went to the Gulbenkian with the first model built, the, these kind of photos of the, the community engage, this facilitate, make possible the, the, the financial support of the project. Sometimes we have to do something beforehand, pro bono, make the energy, the effort to make things happen. So then we get the financial, big financial support and you start to, to grow the kitchen in the community center. Uh, we have um, participants from all over Europe in the, in the process. Uh, it was in August 2014. And these are the, the pictures of the, the kitchen today. You, you see that the kitchen, the, the neighborhood, and the, the kitchen is, is a quite impressive building in the, in the neighborhood. So they, they, the, the main goal was to get the water and the municipality had the, the pretext, the, the, they had the possibility to, to take it there with the kitchen. So what we see in the picture above on the right is the water point. And uh, the first time the, the water ran, it was a big celebration. And uh, they started to wash the cars. And we are thinking, come on, don't do that. Don't, because the municipality will cut the water right away. But um, yeah, it was a, a big thing for them, and for us also. So now they, they do the events. There was a wedding there. There was a birthday parties, a, a lot of theatrical, theatrical plays, theatrical, theatrical plays on the, on the site. And it grew, yeah. And it grew, uh, it grew a lot more than our expectations. This is not a closed project. 
we want to because this is what the first uh, the first tip uh, the first uh, the first thing to do because the water point was the the emergency but there's a lot of problems to resolve in the neighborhood the like now the the few months ago the the electricity company uh, cut the electricity from the houses and now they already have a legal identity they create an association so they can start without our help to start to, in, to connect with the uh, public identities the public institutions so they have a voice now another with the water point, we want to create a place to, to wash the clothes because most of them wash the clothes by hand and uh, a place to dry the clothes. Is, uh, that part really works also. You, have, you see in the picture on the right above, in the middle of the courtyard, you have a structure so they can uh, do the, the grills, the barbecue. And uh, it's a little bit burned already, but uh, it works also. And um, now what I, I want to focus on, the, just to, to finish, is that um, yeah, this is the beginning of the process. We are still working on the, on the site, but now we feel like architects that we cannot help them so much because now the problems are organization of the community. And so we are developing a, a project uh, with anthropologists, sociologists, to, to really focus, focus on creating local mediators on the, on the community. Because hey, I want to help, but there's, I don't have the skills and to, to understand even, to understand or to know how to, to, to unite that community around this and around, around the, the main goal that they have living conditions and new houses for them. And this is what we're working now, is to give houses to these people. This is the next goal and we in hope to achieve. Thank you.